Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So today's video might be a bit lengthy one, but uh, it should be quite a serious piece of feedback and obviously my thoughts on the new Alliance War map and we're going to be going through majority of the nodes to kind of like inspect them one by one and find some of the bigger pain points. But before we get uh, to actually dissecting the map and the nodes themselves, I just wanted to put forward two very quick but important points. Number one is I personally believe that Kabam is making a huge mistake by changing the map and adding new defensive tactics tactics at the same time because they are two very significant game altering pieces that are both being changed at the same time thus will inevitably kind of like make it more difficult for players to adjust i think just like they did in past when they changed them up the one time they delayed the defensive tactics for at least a season and then introduced defensive tactics later uh, just so we would have had time to get accustomed to the new map and map changes and i think that is definitely the way they should have done it uh, right now again if they wanted to change the map that's fine put on the new map and uh, work out the kinks of it and uh, let people get used to the new map and new nodes and then add in different de defensive tactics even though nobody wants defensive tactics to exist in the game in the first place but at least then we would have had time to kind of like get used to a month on a new map with existing defensive tactics and then they could have shift that shifted them about if they ch so chose to do so second uh, most important bit i guess is i urge everybody to understand that uh, the inflated death counts and the first impressions of any new piece of content always is kind of like harsher than in reality it is what i mean by that just because of the fact that the map is new it automatically would increase the amount of deaths people are having here for instance even if there would be two exactly objectively same difficulty level of maps just the fact that one is new and one is something that you used to will mean that you will die more often in the new map purely because they are new fights and you're not used to them and you do not know where the best counters are and how best to counter certain matchups it's kind of like the same idea how for instance when you're exploring act six when you get to the grandmaster the first time you are far less likely to do well in that fight than you are when you are doing it fifth or sixth time and you're finishing up the exploration because you will have had chance to practice to kind of like know more ins and outs of the fight and be more accustomed to it and then as it kind of like time goes by each and every single consecutive kind of time you have to face the grandmaster effectively is going to be easier and easier because you get more and more used to the fight now that is important to understand in terms because just because somebody dies more often than they used to does not necessarily mean that the difficulty level has absolutely skyrocketed. Now, it has a lot of problem nodes that definitely have to be changed. I'm not trying to take anything away from that. What I'm trying to emphasize here is even if it didn't have problem nodes, we would still have people complaining and we would still have people saying I died X amount of times on new map and that would not be the fault of the map and node combinations quite as much as the simple fact that it is new map, new, everything is new. You don't know what team you're supposed to take, you don't know what counters you're going to encounter, you don't know what surprises lie ahead of you and that in itself is a huge disadvantage. And uh, yeah, now that we have put that uh, out of the way, we can jump to kind of like trying to dissect uh, the problem fights. Now, first and foremost, I think at large, everything on the left side is kind of all right. The one bigger kind of like annoyance here, I guess, would be the EMP modification. I think EMP modification is far too specific of the node, largely because it inflicts passive shock. So even champions that would be able to shrug off debuffs or even champions that uh, would take no damage from shock like Corvus or Silver Surfer, for instance cannot deal with this and just like i said because ghost it's a passive debuff so on and so forth so there are far too few counters in my opinion because only champions that realistically counter this node would be champions who are flat out shock immune and we do not have all that many of them especially considering that our latest additions to shock immunity have been terex and moleman who might as well not exist when it comes to offensive uses and in general it's just far too specific of a node i never hope to see kind of like in any piece of content or as early as possible so i would much prefer that node to be changed with something else accordingly but for most part the left side three maps even some of them are somewhat annoying they're not that bad <laughs> like uh i can see how some of these fights again would take some time to get accustomed to but uh all in all 
I would be willing to give them a go. I would be willing to try them and I would be willing to play them and I wouldn't kind of like complain too much. Now the problem starts from path four onwards and there we have a lot of very different problem nodes. Now the steady build up fury and running on fumes. Again, it's one of those, I, I don't like steady build up fury, but in its essence, it doesn't really matter. Not, not that it doesn't matter too much, but there are ways around it. And uh, I would be willing to give it a go, but again, the fun bit is that all of these steady buildup nodes are bugged currently, so that is definitely something they need to address as well. And these uh, steady buildup fury plus long distance relationship, well, that's more or less what you expected from the node combination there. I'm sure there are going to be some annoying uh, kind of like mixtures of champions and so on and so forth, but I don't have too much graph with that. Now, ebb and flow and knockdown and, uh, well, ebb and flow nodes in general they can just go and burn, burn to hell. I think this node design has to be scrapped immediately. I think they have no place in a Alliance War. I don't think, uh, I don't think they have any place in this game because first and foremost, 90% attack reduction is far too penalizing. Second of all, six seconds of a time when you can perform uh, well, when you can start attacking your opponent, uh, it's far too short of a window, especially considering when we have champions who have active mechanics that will hinder you from uh, harming them or knocking them down in the first place. Now we have, for instance, Hitmonkey, he gains his await chance when he gets knocked down. So within six seconds, you have to knock him down make sure you can bypass the wade or kind of like play around that wade and only then you can deal damage. And that is a nightmare scenario in itself. That is something that uh, is extremely ill-designed. And uh, actually there was a third point that I forgot to mention before we dive in deeper into the video. I also wanted to put it forward. It is evident and I think Kabam has since come out and also admitted to the fact that these Alliance War changes is something that they worked prior to the whole community outrage thing. In my personal opinion, obviously that's not an excuse. If they knew that this is messed up and we're gonna hate it, they shouldn't have changed the map and changed the season in the first place or delayed the season to begin with. But uh, it's also something to keep in mind that uh, this whole Alliance War map has been designed before, quote unquote, they took our feedback in consideration, even though they have been steadily getting our feedback uh, throughout the years and pretty much everybody hated the Lions War anyways. But uh, the point is that they had no intention of listening to our feedback before this whole thing started almost two months ago. And within these two months, they couldn't find it within themselves to actually make any amends on this map. And they just decided to post it as it were designed, as it was designed previously, basically ignoring our player outrage. But anyways, uh, that that is also something to keep in mind. And uh, they have committed themselves to amending uh, alliance war pain points at timelier basis and not waiting through entire seasons. But uh, Evan Flow is definitely 100% just the node combination that have to go. Again, put Dark Hawk on Evan Flow, Knockdown, and it's just a miserable time for everybody. Yes, you can bring in Medusa or you can bring in somebody else, but it's very specific counter, which chances are Medusa is not really going to do much for the rest of the map. So you need to bring in a one specific champion that's going to turn out likely to be quite niche. And it's just too limiting, and especially considering that Alliance War fights are timed, and timing out is equal to dying. Nodes that provide anything with 90% attack reduction just shouldn't exist in this game mode. Period. Under no way, shape, or form. If the fight is timed, no node that reduces your damage by 90% should exist in this game. That is as much as I'm gonna say it. And some people have said, oh, you at least need to increase the uh, benefit from it, or you need to make it 15, 20 second window after you knock them down. No, I say period, if you are gonna put timers on the fights, get rid of all of these can't do damage or you do 90% damage, because uh, otherwise it will always be stressful because these are very kind of like, tricky things to execute, whether it's intercept, whether it's knockdown, and when you combine it with uh, having to do it in X amount of time, and you having to do it throughout the entire fight, and then having to be able to capitalize on that. No, it's just horrible, horrible design. I don't know what anybody who came up with it was thinking. And then on top, we're going to have defensive tactics. I just screw all that, get rid of ebb and flow, and never ever even think about putting in anything that has to do with 90% attack reduction or 100% damage reduction or any of that kind of stuff. Just no, get it out. 
And same goes with Stubborn. Do not give champions like indestructibility and crap. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so let's move on here. So we have Strike Back, Aggression, Fury, nothing too crazy. That's perfectly fine. And here we have these Power Focus and Unlimited Power. I posted my Alliance War video a bit earlier today. And these Unlimited Power nodes actually will have extremely interesting interactions with at least a couple of champions. And one of them is going to be Nick Fury because you see he's gonna gain his Fury buffs But once you kind of like uh, destroy Nick Fury the first time his life model decoy and real Nick Fury comes out He purifies all debuffs and buffs on him. So Nick Fury automatically basically goes to level 3 uh, Because of this unlimited power node and because he gains 15% of the, his max power for each Fury debuff And you can say like well then don't debuff Nick Fury like ever don't parry stun him and don't do anything to him, but if opponent just so happens to place Nick Fury, let's say with suicides, he stands the fight with two debuffs, every time 10 seconds expire, he gains two more of these Furies, so realistically you're gonna take at least 20 to 30 seconds uh, to kind of like kill the first life of this Nick Fury, so within 30 seconds he would be up at, uh, what, six Fury buffs? If you have never, ever, like, inflicted a debuff on him, and six Fury buffs, uh, getting shrugged off would gain him 90% of his max power immediately So if he has even a slither of the power at the time you are killing him Which is he going to likely how because you have to be hitting him uh, Basically there is such a thing as unavoidable level 3 to the face and this fight will largely Every time you can see Nick Fury on these nodes you're pretty much guaranteed gonna have to use Indestructible 3 boost or I don't know have an Iceman or something And I think it's a, again uh, just a thing that Kabam has missed because they clearly don't test their maps out and it's a cheeky placement and I don't think this kind of node should be in Alliance War because it mandatory, mandatorily pretty much enforces usage of 3 minute boosts which is a big problem because we cannot have a guaranteed regular frequent access to these boosts because they appear randomly and uh, so we should have zero fights where we absolutely rely on having this boost active. So I think that is definitely another pain point, but let's move on. Let's not waste too much time. Now, steady build up Fury and unlimited power and heavy hitter. I guess it's fair enough. It doesn't sound like too bad. It's nothing pleasurable, but it's something I'd be willing to play with. Let's check out this mini Mysterio. Now, unlimited power, outlast and backup recovery. Again, uh, Nothing too great, but I'd be willing to work around it and test it now. How kinetic transference and power bond uh, Okay, I guess fair enough uh, Nothing too bad Let's move on to the next one right here, and we have power bond matador Okay, can work with that. That's not too bad and here we have buff, uh, imbalance, power drain and return policy. Whenever any of the defenders buffs are nullified, they gain 60% of a bar of power. Now you see, that is just quite ridiculous, because you can't nullify your uh, defender's buffs, right? But whenever the defender gains a buff, the attacker receives an indef indefinite power drain, debuff draining. So basically, you have no power this entire fight, and opponent's just going to be gaining hold chiefs for power. Now this design, again, in my opinion, is take as... And we're going to see it throughout the map here quite frequently, where uh, whoever designed this map took a really annoying node or a really annoying concept and then doubled down on it, rather than maybe adding a node that eases the problem or the issue, they double down on it because here, whenever the defender gains a buff, the attacker receives indefinite, indefinite power and debuff, and you can only get rid of it by launching a special attack, I think. Yeah, by landing a special attack. But if you're getting power drained, you're not going to be able to get your special attack. So your whole idea is to make sure that you gain power quicker than your opponent can. However, the return policy ensures that whenever any of the defender's buffs are nullified, they gain 60% of a bar of power. So they may add another node that's going to increase opponent's power gain, thus increase the time he is uh, landing his special attacks or you have to spend baiting the special attacks and that will significantly impact you, your ability to gain power and get rid of these power and debuffs. So it's just a very nasty, nasty combination and then you're gonna have defensive tactics and annoying defender abilities on top of it. It's just not a good time, not an enjoyable piece of content by any means and uh, it should go. <laughs> it's quite a simple. And uh, this buff imbalance, power drain, blood in the water where he's gonna gain 200% uh, fury. Again, 
I don't know. Uh, this one, I guess you can kind of work, but that buff imbalance power drain node, in my opinion, should also just go away. Because the node in itself is kind of like counterproductive. I can understand the buff imbalance fury or whatever the nodes they have, where effectively you can at least get rid of it realistically by launching a special attack. But this node in itself is kind of designed in a way that you can't launch a special attack. So hate it. Uh, hazard, shift, <laughs> incinerate, poison, and cold turkey. Cold Turkey, first and foremost, again, in my opinion, has a no spot in Alliance War, and I'm going to tell you exactly why. Whenever the attacker purifies a debuff, they receive a burst of degeneration damage dealing 40% attack. Now, this is a node that shouldn't be included in Alliance War, period, because it is obviously just fun and interactive damage, which nobody likes, but here is a second problem. It automatically disqualifies running champions under certain conditions, because there are plenty of champions, for instance, uh, I don't know, if you bring in Ghost, let's say, without good synergy, you purify these debuffs at the start, and that means you're gonna take degen automatically just for entering the fight. Uh, same, I don't know, if you bring in um, Molman, Molman has a chance to purify debuffs. You bring in Ronin, he will purify debuffs with a when you dash forward and backwards, or hit monkey is going to purify debuffs, and called turkey node basically prevents flat out you from even considering of using these champions, let's say with suicide masteries, because you automatically gain these debuffs. And uh, yeah, I don't think called turkey should be used in alliance war at all. Period. Again, uh, not because. The degeneration, well, first and foremost, degeneration damage is not enjoyed by anybody, but second of all, because it just flat out automatically uh, shuts down champions regardless of what plays there, regardless of what defensive tactics plays there, or regardless of with what nodes you have combined it with. And it's extremely horrible combination in this case, where you have Hazard, Shift, Incinerate, and Poison, where basically you don't really have outside of like, I think Iceman and maybe Emma in diamond form, champions that are immune both to incinerate and to poison, but uh, don't let that scare you. I'm sure next month or month after we're gonna receive another couple of champions that are immune to incinerate and poison because that has typically been Kabam's MO. So definitely look forward to champion release in uh, August. I, I would be willing to bet uh, $50 that we're gonna see at least one champion that's immune to incinerate and poison but uh, that issue put aside I think hazard shift is just extremely poorly designed node to begin with because it's extremely limiting out of 170 champions in the game I think at the best of conditions there are maybe 10 that can deal with hazard shift in a very kind of like worthwhile manner without kind of like just absolutely not being able to throw any attacks within these seven second periods because theoretically you can just bring in let's say poison immune champion and then wait seven seconds and then hit opponent for seven seconds and then wait seven seconds again right but again the problem is that these fights are timed the problem is defensive abilities the problem is being able to utilize these seven second windows and realistically to have some sort of confident experience and confident uh way of dealing with this node you want both incinerate and poison immune and that is automatically like microscopic pool of champions already which is basically doing nothing apart from separating in between haves and have nots and uh, all that combined with cold turkey which uh, puts a, takes away the champions like ghost who could potentially be able to deal with this or I don't know let's let's go with Mallman for instance and uh, it even further eliminates champions that you can possibly use and then on top of that you would have to deal with some very annoying defender presumably because this is such a like very important node so yeah no this this node combination has to be scrapped absolutely unconditionally this is just a uh, bullshittery in its highest regard uh, again like I'm not trying to be negative, I'm not trying to bash on Kabam at all, but whoever fucking came up with this is a sociopath and a fucking dickhead. There is no other words I can describe a person who would potentially put these two nodes together in Alliance War and uh, say, yeah, let's go, this is what's gonna happen. No, fuck off, this is stupid and it should never exist in the first place individually in Alliance War, let alone, pe let alone piece together on a single fight and then defensive tactic on top and then an annoying defender on top no it's like fuck off like nobody should be forced to deal with this node like ever especially in alliance or so yeah fuck off uh definitely has to go away 
And uh, the next node is quite similar. So we have this hazard sh shift incinerate poison and instead of cold turkey, we have resistor node. Again, it's a very limited pool again with uh, a hazard shift because there are so few champions who can deal with it properly. And then when you have a resistor on top of it, it's just wh why, why do desk and system making these nodes like that miserable fights can be hard and fights can be enjoyable just like i said for instance on the fights on the left side i have no doubt that some of these fights like uh strike count fury brute force so on and so forth are going to be tricky fights but these at least don't make you vomit at the first sight of them now the stuff on the right side is just fucking disgusting and uh yeah no like honestly it's like i to a person who designs and to a person who actually releases that kind of shit, I would suggest to go and chemically castrate them to make sure that they do not produce any offsprings because that bloodline has nothing positive to offer to humanity. But anyways, uh, let's move on. Uh, buff imbalance, power drain again is a crap node in my opinion. Matador kind of makes it a bit interesting but cold turkey is like why do we have these nodes in here? It's I don't know, uh, that definitely also, I think Cold Turkey has to go, period. And again, so let's let's jump to tier two. I think in tier two, we had some all right and some really bad. Steady buildup, unblockable, I do not like that node in general, especially with Fry, but overall, it does seem that it could potentially be quite skill intensive experience. However, again, these nodes are bugged and the opponents start the fight unblockable. So uh, that's about as much you expect from Kabam, but I'd be willing to give these nodes a go. They would be quote unquote pain fights or really skill intensive fights and tricky nodes where many people would complain and die to them but in themselves they do not seem overly unfair and relatively open based on what defensive tactic you're going up against uh, so and so forth so yeah ebb and flow again uh, i already said everything about ebb and flow everything i said before about ebb and flow applies here to this iteration of ebb and flow as well just scrap any node that has 90 percent or 100 percent attack reduction under any circumstances they have no place whatsoever in any content where we have timed fights in my personal opinion we do not have a single decently enjoyable node that includes text you deal no damage or you deal 90 percent less damage unless uh so if it were to me, all of these nodes would be scrapped, but at the very least, keep them the fuck away from Alliance Quest and Alliance War. Because these fights are timed and fucking with people's damage output is not cool. Uh, especially with the current price of potions and stuff like that as well. Again, we have Ebb and Flow, fuck off. Uh, tenacity as well, <laughs> just to make it more fun. Uh, yeah, no get rid of all that crap we don't need anything like that here aggression prowess uh, and power fox 2 that's fine nothing too crazy there rage and enhanced fury uh it's all right i suppose uh rage in itself obviously is not a great node it's a node that you again have to bring in like a very very specific counter but in itself it can exist uh here and there and uh, yeah i'm all right with it more or less being there uh, this uh, void here, so we have the tunnel vision, oscillate, aggression prowess. No, uh, here you either need to make you need to make a decision whether you need to get rid of oscillate or you need to get rid of tunnel vision. In my opinion, especially if you are adding like any aggression node that puts kind of like a time sensitive uh, way, uh, well, time sensitive stress increasing node that where you have to consistently be aggressive but you have to be precise and aggressive because you cannot get tunnel vision up and then oscillate just alters the regular fight ai and just makes all these fights more chaotic no just get rid of either one of those two and the node would be fine in my opinion uh encroaching stun with power reserve yeah no get rid of this fight but especially if there's going to be there are going to be champions either who is power cannot be altered because we have some of those champions or just champions in general who have really long special attack animations with power reserve obviously they will have increased amount of time they're going to be throwing their special attacks which means you will have far less time to gain power first and foremost and second of all you will have far less time to actually time your special attacks so realistically again when you go in a fight like this if you want to be sure that you will be able to come out uh, relatively unscathed you need to bring in stun immune champions and we have like a couple of those in game so it's far too limiting, it's far too annoying. Either get rid of power reserve or either get rid of encroaching stun and then this node will be pretty much fine. 
uh, now it has spite and powerful from afar and this is again the idea because spite in itself is a scary note period spite is a nobody's favorite note and spite is very hard because you never know how ai is going to play and when he's going to go defensive and powerful from afar is kind of like taking a node that is already annoying and then doubling down on it which has been kind of like the baseline concept of act 6 and which was the baseline concept of act uh, 7.1 beta this is exactly the kind of stuff that people hate because you take something that's hard and then you make sure that it goes from 10 to 11. so again uh powerful from afar you can deal with spike you can deal with when you put them together it's just a pure misery. So get rid of one of them and the node will be fine, in my opinion. Uh, what do we have here? We have aspect of evolution, kinetic transference. Here again is exactly the same concept that I talk, uh, have spoken about it multiple times. So we have aspect of evolution, which is already very, very hard, very, very annoying node, which uh, in my opinion should not be in Alliance Wars, but okay. But adding kinetic transference means that uh, when you're going to be taking hits in block, obviously the opponent is going to be gaining power, thus he's going to be triggering aspect of evolution more often, and thus he's going to be hitting, uh, gaining even more power, and it just kind of like going to go in spiral. So again, I don't like the fact that node like Aspect of Evolution is put together as kinetic transparency, uh, whilst we have champions in game that uh, basically drop special attacks that cannot be fully dexed, thus kinetic transparency is guaranteed to get triggered in quite a lot of uh, cases. So yeah, no, uh, just get rid of it, that's about it. Just get rid of one of those, Aspect of Evolution, kinetic transparency, replace something uh, relatively reasonable, but this node again is just annoying like you can fight it but it just feels like you're fighting against the nodes and you're fighting against spiteful child that is determined to make the experience in alliance for as miserable as he possibly can for you this is not something you got to enjoy this is something you got to survive which is messed up which is what people are tired of buff imbalance weakness rich get richer and uh okay so i guess this one uh is all right because once you land special attack you're good and there's nothing that realistically prevents you from gaining power so this, this node's all right i don't mind it it's uh workable it's doable buff imbalance weakness and down in the yeah this is okay as well there's not, nothing like too criminal here i'd say window for opportunity stun with buff toggle unstoppable is exactly the same concept i have been talking about so they are taking a node that effectively messes with your openings and limits the amount of time you can strike the opponent because either you land an intercept or you will have to dance about the screen up until the shield goes down right or you die basically if you make a mistake and that uh buff toggle unstoppable is just limiting the counters even further making sure that even potentially the time that you would have had to attack the opponent you will have to worry about unstoppable and uh, that is just annoying design especially because if you notice the time as one lasts for 12 seconds and one lasts for eight seconds so that man means that every time you will have a 12 second downtime at the very least you will have four seconds in that 12 seconds where you can actually parry the opponent where the opponent is going to be unstoppable now obviously yes you can use a slow champion in here but it still doesn't answer the for instance the window of opportunity stun not to mention that uh, many of the champions need to be able to let's say stun the opponent to reliably apply that slow such as like she hulk and uh spider gwen and a bunch of others or and red guardian needs to be able to drop his heavy attacks to apply this slow but you can't drop that and stun the opponent and not stun the opponent you know what i mean uh so yeah it's again just uh annoying fight design which i would personally be more or less willing to deal with in harder permanent content but it's not something i want to see in alliance war which i'm gonna have to do three times a week spend a lot of money and potions and uh, boost stress and then on top of it we'll also have to think about uh, defensive tactics and very very annoying defender abilities so yeah uh so again just going out of their way to make the time not enjoyable and uh, let's go over to window of opportunity stun with powerful from afar and opportunist uh this combination i actually kind of like 
Because uh, if we have window of opportunity standing powerful from afar, then we can artificially make sure that the opponent gains more power, drops a special attack, and uh, if we can punish that special attack, it kind of like eliminates the need of having to stun the opponent in the first place. So this would be kind of like the opposite of what I have been talking all the time, where we have a very, very annoying node, and the second node doubles down and makes the first node harder. Then I think powerful from afar is a very good combination with this window of opportunity stun, because it offers you an alternative way to get openings by dashing away, by increasing the distance, opponents can start gaining power, then you can bait out the special attack and you can go in and attack and you don't have to stun in order to gain that attack. So this is the type of design that I uh, I am okay with, I wish we would see more. And uh, mini bosses now, Some of, most of the mini bosses are quite fine, I think recovery and double and indomitable vigorous assault, it's okay, uh, it's workable, stunning reflection, stupefy heavy hitter and unli unlimited power. Uh, okay, I guess, yeah, why not, uh, I can work with that, again, keep in mind Nick Fury, uh, it's gonna shrek, shred some people there, and uh, let's go on to the third mini boss here, Trial by Fire, I don't think should be placed on a mini boss at all, largely just because Massacre exists as a champion, because, uh, if you will effectively have to bring in an incinerate mean champion, or a champion that shrugs off debuffs, uh, however, this uh, placement would kind of like work crazily well with Massacre because every time uh, Incinerate fails to apply, uh, you'll take energy damage instead if you are using an immune champion. So it's just one of those combinations where just because uh, <laughs> that ability exists, I don't think is a good node to have an alliance for and if they do want to keep this node then in my opinion they should either significantly decrease the damage of the incinerate or they should significantly increase the timing because two seconds is a very very short window uh, i think that should be realistically six or seven seconds to make it more in line with nodes like brute force uh, yeah brute force uh so yeah there's that sorry my bad let's check out this mini boss on top right Try my best here, guys. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna tap on this and then next on that. So, Hurt Locker, Power Focus, uh, Enhanced Special 1, Power and This one's alright. This one's not too bad, I think, overall. Uh, this mini boss I do have a problem with. Aspect of Evolution, Enhanced Special 2, Special 2 Bias, and Improved Power Gain. Uh, again, that aspect of evolution is extremely difficult node in its reality, especially when put on like larger mini boss and boss fights. And improved power gain just makes it obviously worse because aspect of evolution first and foremost in itself ensures that the champion is going to be gaining more and more power and improved power gain obviously any champion that has any power gain effects is gonna, ah I don't know I I don't think this is a well designed mini boss here. I think I would be able to be okay with that node on like a regular path uh, because then they have far less attack and far less health and you have actually a decent chance of closing out that fight quickly. But as a mini boss, I don't like it at all. And now we have this uh, rage and uh, return policy. Again, I don't think the return policy should be allowed to stay there. Whenever any of the defenders buffs are nullified, they gain 40% of a bar of power. So let's say ultimately they can gain... Uh, five furies and you nullify those again 200 percent of bar power so they automatically gain two bars of power and uh this fight is obviously going to also be quite extended due to the rage damage cap uh it's not the greatest i don't think it's a brilliant design but uh i'd be willing to try and work with it myself so i guess that's all right and uh this uh, yeah hazard shift and now hazard shift is just a horrible node that has to go and has to be altered heavily so that more or less kind of like goes through the nodes themselves obviously uh i cannot yet identify the biggest possible problem placements on each of these nodes because i don't have as much experience and uh additionally the defensive tactics will heavily impact uh the face of alliance war which we have yet to actually experience firsthand now kabam has stated that they already altered stubborn and instead of three indestructible charges they're only gonna have one which i still don't think is kind of like good enough I think they should at the very least remove the dexterity requirement from it and maybe add something else in place of stubborn uh, like miss auto wade and auto block instead of dexterity being involved in there at all because I think dexterity is far too punishing uh, but 
anyways, Kabam at least has kind of like wowed to do these amendments and adjustments quicker and hopefully get this map relatively okay uh, before season 19 starts. But there's definitely a lot to be amended, definitely a lot being changed. And I think my personal biggest problem with this map is uh, that it's just me. <laughs> like, I don't know what the best way to describe it. I, I, I think the point is that you can clearly see malicious intent and malicious design behind these nodes. We can clearly see when somebody, when designing this map, was not taking consideration enjoyment of the game or somebody having fun clearing it. When somebody was designing this map, they were having evil maniacal laugh and they were like, ah, how can I screw as many people over as I po possibly come up with? This is the product that somebody who has been instructed to make sure that players are having as miserable time in Alliance Wars and go and make a map for that. So that is why I'm angry because not a specific node in itself, just because the way these node combinations come across, it effectively it looks like big fuck you to players. It's just like, what are the most stupid retarded nodes I can put together to make sure you hate your life? This is what this map tells me. It's definitely clear that this is designed by basically the same person who designed Act 6, or at least largely by the same person, or at least with the same idea in mind. It's definitely designed by the same person who uh, designed whatever people were testing in Act 7 beta. Because it's kind of like, go and uh, fuck over as many players as you can, and then put another node on top to manage to somehow screw over the remaining player. And uh, yeah, I think especially anything to do with the right side is not enjoyable piece of content at all. If uh, the first three <laughs> paths are clearly like quote unquote the easy ones, everything in the middle and further on the right just looks uh, fucking awful. And that's before you actually deal with very, very problematic defenders. And another problem with Alliance Watch currently is because every or almost every new champion that gets released has quite annoying abilities for defense as well. Like if you notice champions released uh, this year, Terex, zero offensive potential and annoying on defense. Like, uh, then we have, I don't know, Storm can be okay in offense, but also annoying on defense because of her glancing and you don't want to knock her down and so on and so forth. And uh, yeah, pretty much any champion that's released these days have a lot of defensive capabilities and can be annoying. And then it has to go on top of these maps and then it has to go on top of defensive tactics. And it's just far too much. It's just far too much. And I think people are fed up with it. I think defensive tactics should be scrapped altogether. I think maps should be reworked if Kabam wants to make many defender champions. That in itself is a buff in increase in alliance for difficulty. The more annoying defenders we have, the more annoying defenders we have to deal with. The exponentially more difficult alliance war gets even if the nodes aren't changed, even if defender tactics do not exist. And now on top of it all, we have defender tactics. We have to just doesn't look great. Uh, Alliance War definitely has went from by far my favorite mode of uh, game and uh, to something I'd rather kind of like skip. Uh, something I definitely don't enjoy. And I hope they can change that. This is not changing. This is making it worse. I'd, I'd much, much, much rather play previous map with previous defensive tactics, even though I didn't like them they were far better than what we have right in front of us. And that's very important to know. It's very important to know where Kabam was originally intending to take this game. Because yes, they will amend some of this stuff and they will fix some of this stuff. But the simple fact that Kabam thought this map is a good idea, these defensive tactics are a good idea, and that is what they were going to feed us in future, just so shows how delusional and sociopathic are some of the people working in there. And... Uh, there's yeah nothing else I can say about it, but uh, that will also bring this super long video to the end. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed. Let me know what you think. What has been your experience with Alliance Wars thus far? Uh, am I too critical? Am I being too negative? Again, am I crying on internet about things I should not? I'm just kidding. Uh, if you don't like the video, well then you're perfectly free to go and fuck yourself. And uh, catch you guys next time. But as you are as you are uh, watching this beautiful creature and getting mesmerized by its beauty. Uh, 
hit that like button, hit that sub button, go down to the comment section, let me know what you guys are thinking, and uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys soon, see ya.